Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 brings some nice features and changes this year. However, not all of those changes carry over to some of the older devices that are supported. So I thought we'd go over them one by one. Now Apple dropped support for a few iPhones this year. So iOS 17 will support everything that's newer than the iPhone 8, 8 plus and iPhone 10. So unfortunately, if you have an iPhone 8, 8 plus and 10, you'll only get iOS 16 updates. You won't be getting any features from iOS 17. Now the first feature that works on newer phones with iOS 17 will be a new standby mode. This allows for when it's charging in landscape to sort of give you a home screen that's relevant to when you're not really using the phone, gives some nice photos and more. Let me go ahead and show you what that is. And if you have a dock like this one, or you just want to set it sideways on a charger, and oftentimes you may have to wait a moment till it's either locked or there you go. It goes into this new standby mode. Sometimes it'll jump out of it and it depends on the lighting in the room. This standby mode works on all iOS 17 supported devices when they're in landscape and charging. However, for it to always stay on, you'll need an iPhone 14 pro and 14 pro max as they have the always on display. So this feature will be on all the older phones, but not the always on display mode that we have here. Apple completely rewrote how autocorrect works in iOS 17. However, with this new algorithm for autocorrect, it needs specific processors in order to benefit from that. So if we go into notes here, and this is on an iPhone 14 pro max, and we say this is an iPhone you'll see it's incorrect and it's suggesting that I change it. If I hit space, it changes. If I tap on it, it gives me the option to revert back to the previous version. And then we can just jump back simply or recorrect it again. That new feature is only available on iPhone 12 or later, and also is only available in certain languages to start. So Arabic, Dutch, English, French, German, Hebrew, Korean, Italian, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, Spanish, and Thai. If it's one of those languages, that is set on your phone and you have an iPhone 12 or later, you'll be able to use that new feature. There's also new keyboard predictions where iOS 17 will predict what you're going to type in real time. So maybe you're saying I'm going to head to the store. It can predict some of that information and you'll see here it's predicting the rest of the word. I hit space and it jumps to the end of it. This again requires an iPhone 12 or later to work. Unfortunately, the predictions only work when you have English set as your language. So currently it will only work with English to start. Maybe they'll add more languages in the future. Apple updated Siri this year so that you no longer have to say the word, Hey, in front of it to trigger the actual action on your phone. If you go into your settings and you go down to Siri and search, you'll have an option for listen for, and you'll see it says Siri or then Siri with the word, Hey, in front of it you can select the traditional one or just turn it off altogether. So that will work. And there's some exceptions to this. So we can say, Siri, what's the weather today? And you'll see it gives me the weather. Now this is available on all iOS 17 devices, but only in English. Also, if you're using AirPods at the same time, you'll only be able to use that on AirPods Pro second generation or AirPods Pro 2. If you're connected with AirPods 3 or even AirPods Max, for some reason that doesn't work. So it may be the chipset inside, but either way, that may be coming later to other AirPods, but right now it will only work with AirPods Pro 2. There's also a new Siri back-to-back -back request feature that's been brought to iOS 17, and there's some exceptions as to what devices it will work on based on language and more. So this particular feature, let me show you how it works. Siri, what's my reminder today? And it says, I don't have any. Create a reminder to record a YouTube video. Create a reminder to record a YouTube video. and you can see it worked. So you have back-to-back -back recordings. However, this is only available in English in Australia, Canada, Great Britain, and the US on the iPhone XS, XR, and later. So you will need to have certain languages set for that to work. Now with iOS 17, there's new AirPods updates as well with adaptive audio, which is on all iOS 17 devices, but again, falls back to AirPods Pro 2 currently. So once you connect your AirPods and if you have the beta update installed or when it's finally out, you'll actually see this. If you go into your AirPods settings, you'll have the option for not just 
off transparency, but you'll have adaptive and noise cancellation. Then you'll also have some other controls such as personalized volume and more. And then of course you can mute and unmute. That's not necessarily specific to the AirPods Pro 2, but the feature specific to these devices are the transparency, then adaptive and noise cancellation. Everything else will just have your normal settings. Now FaceTime got some updates this year as well. And again, there's some things that require different devices. So there's a new live reactions feature or a 3d reactions feature when you're placing a FaceTime call and you can actually emote basically some emojis or reactions using different gestures. So you can use a thumbs up to give sort of a different gesture to have things take place on the display. This works on iPhone 12 or later when you're using the front camera. So you'll need an iPhone 12 or later for it to to recognize that and you'll have to be using the front camera for that in order to work. Also FaceTime is available on Apple TV this year with an update later when it comes out with TV OS. Again, you'll need an iPhone that supports iOS 17, but you'll need an Apple TV 4k second generation or later. So iPhone 10 S and 10 R will work with that, but you'll need a newer Apple TV 4k iOS 17 brings some great accessibility features. One in particular requires specific iPhones. So if we go into our magnifier app and we enable what's called point and speak, I've already enabled it, but you need to go into your settings and make sure that you have detection mode added. Once you have detection mode added, tap on the detection mode and you've got a bunch of different options here for recognizing people and more. The bottom option is called point and speak. Once that's enabled, if I bring an object in the background, it will use the camera to read what I'm actually pointing at. Apple actually showed someone pointing at a microwave so it could read the numbers on there. Let me show you how this works. So if I bring in an iPhone wallet case box and it'll say hand detected, hand detected. I'll point at this word. It read what I pointed at. It works pretty well. It is a little bit buggy since it's an early beta, at least at the time using this. Let's try it again. If we flip this over, it will read the back. And so you'll see that works pretty well. I think it will get better as Apple releases it to the public. And if we flip this over, it's actually using the LiDAR sensor on the later phones. You'll need a pro model phone. So an iPhone 12 pro 12 pro max, 13 pro 13 pro max, or 14 pro or 14 pro max. You need that LiDAR sensor for it to detect depth. And it's using that in combination with the cameras and the processor to understand what you're pointing at. So you have to have one of those phones for that feature. There's also a feature Apple showed off for home that allows for history. Now this requires any iPhone that can run iOS 17 and within our home app, maybe we have some locks and someone unlocks it or locks it. We now have the option to see a history of who's unlocking and locking those devices. This will work on any iOS 17 device. However, you will need to have the updated architecture for home installed. This is a feature that's been out for a little while on iOS 16. So everything has to be updated to that, or you won't be able to use that new feature. Also, there's a great new feature Apple showed called name drop, where you can actually share a contact or just airdrop things by bringing your phone close to another phone. That's something that's coming later this year in a later update, according to Apple, and will work on all iOS 17 devices and some Apple watches. For example, Apple watch series six and later Apple watch SE first and second generation and Apple watch ultra will support that. So if you have an Apple watch series four or five, unfortunately you won't be able to use name drop, but you'll be able to use it on the others I mentioned. And with iOS 17, Apple seems to be bringing most of the features to all iPhones. However, there are a few that make sense that aren't supported, such as needing the LiDAR sensor for that accessibility mode. However, everything else seems to be fairly reasonable except for some of the language support. Hopefully they update that in the future and they'll bring all of those different features to more countries. I'm sure they will as they tend to do that, but it does take some time. Let me know your overall experience so far with iOS 17, if you're using it or what you're looking forward to using most. It is a bit disappointing that Apple's not supporting the iPhone 10 and eight series phones, but maybe they'll change their mind as we get closer to a final release. However, it doesn't seem likely at this point. Let me know your thoughts of iOS 17 so far. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.